Hi everybody, it's Robbie and I've been working in my garden and I just realized it's the middle of August already. So I'm gonna take you guys around and see what's going on. So let's go do the mid-August garden tour, see what looks good and see what does not, and let's get on with it and see what's going. Can you believe one more month left this summer? One more month, my favorite time of the year. But then fall's okay, it's warm too. And Christmas, oh that's in the winter, and you got all those wonderful Christmas shows which I binge on all the time and then you've got spring when you're ready to start planning all kinds of stuff so let's go do the garden tour oh i wish you could see that hummingbird there probably not by the time i get over there we've got hummingbirds everywhere he's feeding on the hummingbird feeder back there well i'm going to start my garden tour from the side of the house here i haven't set this up yet for winter i'm not sure what i'm going to do but this has worked out really good to start seedlings Still are moving some things around. Celery came up and I've got uh, kale in there. That's a piece I broke off and stuck in there and parsley. So we'll work on that later. The front, I am doing some changes. I've decided to turn the whole front part of the house into a garden. So with vegetables growing. So I'm working on that and that should be changing as the year goes on. I've got the zucchini going in there and some of the mixed zucchini hybrids that I planted. They're doing really good and there's some sprouting broccoli back there and the garlic chives are sending up flowers already. So this is good, doing good. I'm going to use the tree stumps. Gary was going to move them. And I said, no, I'm going to put planters on top with pots on top and layer it. And then over there, that one too is full of scraps from the yard and kitchen scraps and leaves and everything in there. I'm going to get squash growing in there so that's it for here like I said this is a work in progress right now but boy those vines that's how I know it's a hybrid zucchini they're doing really good and we're getting a lot of fruit I don't know if you can see that fruit I'll try to see if I can zoom in on that but we're getting a lot of zucchini off of that okay here of course are the tomatoes I staked up earlier with all my masking tape uh, one of them was from last year, came back, and then a couple of the midnight snacks. They're doing really, really good. They seem to take the heat quite well. I've got my little monkey. It's a little stuffed animal, and it's got Velcro, so I put it there to hold up the plant. They're doing really good. So this variety did well in the heat. Oh, I've got basil growing, too. This is from last year, and it came back, and yes, you're supposed to remove the flowers. If you don't remove the flowers, it could die back. But you know what? They seem to keep going and going. Look how big and beautiful the leaves are. All right, so I've got the tomato plants. Some did okay. Keep in mind, we've been running so hot weather. That's really good English. <laughs> we've been running really hot weather. And so, yes, a lot of the plants have struggled, but the thing is, keep them watered, keep them going, because once the weather cools, they should come back. I have not planted this fig tree, and it's kind of stunt. If this was in the ground next to a compost bin, no joke, it would have been eight feet tall. Peppermint, my peppermint's doing really good, and I have, you can't see it, a flower pot in there with stevia growing in there. So again, I layer, layer, layer. Let's see, let's swing you over here. Okay, that's my stevia table, my turmeric table, and my ginger. That's all growing here, and this is doing so good. I want to get more growing, and I am going to dedicate this whole area just to that. You know, when you're working in your garden and you find something that works, that's when you work with it. I've tried lettuce here, and it was like, eh, it was okay. I've tried different things here, and they were okay. I was going to use it as a workbench, but this has worked out great. So this now will be my ginger, turmeric, and of course my stevia table. Again, keep in mind, I've talked about this on my other tours. This was one little pot of stevia that I bought at one of the big box stores. And it had a whole bunch of little plants. I tasted it while I was there to see if it had a good sweetness to it, and it did. And so when I came home, it had multiple plants and I kind of stuck them in all these little pots. See all the pots in here? That's three pots. I separated them. There's another one back there. And now I've got all these big plants. Now keep in mind, if your stevia, wherever you are, dies back, and this will, 
it gets to the ground, don't dig it out and throw it away. Because come spring, they have popped back beautiful and bigger. They get bigger with every year. So don't throw it away. It's not dead. The roots are probably still alive. Okay, let's see what's going on here. This is Gary's next project. He's going to put a hose bib here so I can take care of my front garden now, which I want to plant all kinds of things in. And he's adding on here, and you can see he's been digging and going around. So he's putting in some more hose bibs because I think he feels sorry for me dragging around 200 foot hoses all over the property. It works and is a chore. But this will be easier all around, and when it's easier, when you make life easier, you want to do more. And if it's harder, you want to do less. So that's what he's doing. This is his project right now. And this is the back side of squash growing and my garden. I was doing a lot on the other side of the wall, but it's actually harder to hike down than do the front yard. So I'm kind of changing things, which means I wasn't taking care of my fig trees as well. But we'll see. Speaking of fig trees, everywhere I look, I have fig trees growing. That's a seedling coming up. Then this is my walking onions. I planted some mint in there. I've got a little bit of walking onion in there, see? And that's a weed. Just pick it and drop it. Let's see, still got mint growing here. This is orange mint. See how bright apple color that is? The orange mint is a brighter mint. And then you've got your chocolate mint. This is just a little piece, it's hard to tell, but let's see if we can look. See the chocolate mint? It's got a brown stem. Peppermint too has kind of a brown stem as well. That's a way you can spot it if you're at the store and you're not sure what you've got. Okay, in here I've got what appears to be a zucchini, but it's leaving, and it's leaving too much, so it's probably a hybrid, but it's been growing zucchini, so it's a hybrid zucchini. I've got cucumbers in there, and I bought this thing at the thrift store, and I'm training my cucumbers to leave and go up. Isn't that cool? So it's coming up, and hopefully it will go all the way to the top, and then I don't know where it's going to go from there. But I'm training it to go up there. Another fig tree. See, I told you, fig trees grow everywhere. They, they come up from seed. Then, of course, more tomatoes. They're a little, need a little cleaning back there. And they're tucked under there. And celery. And I've got, uh, not basil, oregano back there. This is my forest of dinosaur kale. It's been really chewed on by the birds. I've talked about that before, and that's okay because there is no food for the birds right now that eat greens because the hillsides are pretty much clear. All you've got is, you don't even have any weeds, you just have trees, and they, they don't eat the trees. So let them come in, do their thing, because this is no big deal. The moment the birds are done chewing, it will grow better. It's gonna come back even better. And once the weather cools, because this is really a cold loving plant, all the kale will come in just even more beautiful. So let them do their thing. It's no big deal. And I'll clean it up later. But right now, let them eat and do what they want. Okay, let's see. Let's swing this way slowly. My green sorrow is down there. I use that in different things if I do stir fries or green drinks. Tomatillos, we've been pulling lots of tomatillos off of this. That came up from seed, and there's two in there because there's a green variety and a purple growing in there. Celery also came up from seed. I didn't plant anything this year in here. Even all the lettuce that went to seed. This is all lettuce seed. Romaine lettuce. That all went to seed, and I'm going to spread that around. And there's another tomatillo back there. And, oh, my chili peppers. Isn't that something? I grow the chilies, but I haven't used it in a long time. I thought I was going to have to go to the hospital. I chopped it up and my hands were burning so bad that it couldn't get it to stop. It burned all night. It was horrible. So now I know with those hot, hot chilies, and it's like the second hottest on the list, use gloves. Okay, lemon verbena, more kale in there, more celery. There's my mushroom plant, sprouting broccoli. And then I clean this up a little bit. I've got a Korean melon growing back there and peppers, and then that was a strawberry spinach, and something happened to it. I think the ants built a nest in the ground around my strawberry spinach. So what I did was 
I pulled it out, repotted it, put it back, and look at that. There was nothing to it, and now it's growing green leaves, so it's coming back. So you can always try to move things and see if you can save it. Okay, let's turn around. Okay, now we're back on this side again. Let's see, I've got Popolo coming up, and more zucchini. I did a whole video on this pot, and I've been pulling zucchini off constantly. I should have pulled that one off, but that grew so quick. And all kinds of mint growing in here. That is a dragon fruit plant, and I really don't want it in here. It's coming up from the other side, and it is a small piece also in the front that I planted, and it's growing through my garden, and I've been stuck a few times. So Gary's going to remove that, chop it up, and put it around his garden. All right, more... Oh, this is, let's see, more sprouting broccoli, but this one's the purple one, and I have yet to get anything off of it yet. It's beautiful, green leaves, the birds have been nibbling on it. But see, the stems are purple, so we'll see what happens when it finally throw, throws some, you know, flower buds. Uh, hopefully, they'll be purple. This is orange mint all over the ground, and again, orange mint is a bright apple-colored green, so that's how you can tell that, and compost tea. Everybody should be making that. It's free, and the plants love it. I threw a bunch on that the other day, and that thing just took off. The plants love it. Okay, another little zucchini came up in there, throwing a little yellow zucchini of some sort, probably a hybrid again. The bees are going after the strawberry mint. Okay, that's another subject for another time, really. As mint tea, it tastes horrible. It's so bad, it's like drinking perfume. So we do not make mint tea out of strawberry mint. That is good for the garden. It attracts a lot of bees. The bees love it and let them, more power to them, they can have it. And of course, I've got collard growing all through here. That is all sprouting broccoli. You know, all in all, to look at this garden and to think it's so green, and we've been running over a hundred for so long, I think it did a good job. And they really didn't suffer the ones that were in pots because I try to hit those pots with water every night and not water them during the day and they did quite well. More collard. Again, look what the birds are doing. What they do is they're eating the new growth and so when the leaves come out they look like this. Plus they do sit on there a little bit and eat a little bit of the leaves as well but they really eat the new growth. Okay, let's swing you over here. These are my pepinos growing. I've got some red Swiss chard. Look at that. We are getting pepinos this year. Look at that. Okay, you can't see it. See if I can get in there better to show you what it looks like. But this is really heavy. And I'm going to have to start taking more of these off now. There it is. Bought that at the grocery store. One pepino. Brought it home planted it and we now have pepinos. Okay, now we've got onions over here and here is my, oh, my beautiful dazzling blue kale. The birds are chewing that one up. I could cover it with tool and if I cover it with a tool, they'll stop. But you know what? This, see how beautiful it is? It will come back and we've got plenty. I don't have to really worry about it. It's not going to kill the plant. They're not doing that much damage. They're just eating the soft, tender parts of the um, plant, and that's what's causing the leaves to look bad. It's, it's a cosmetic thing. That's all it is. It's just cosmetic. So it will come back. And this is my water, one of my water features, which brings the birds. That's one bird that doesn't do any damage, is the hummingbird. They pollinate, they take their baths, and they leave. That is my curry plant in there. Bought that one plant and stuck it in there and it's doing really good. And then I've got Swiss chard growing in there. My tomatoes. And they're still hanging on in there with all this heat. And the papaya down here. Okay, all the mint on the ground here. This is spearmint. And this is the one that Gary loves. And I make tea out of this every day now. And what I do is, you see my videos probably on how I make my tea. But we mix it in with our water and we make an iced tea out of it. One pot that I make lasts all day because you just add a little bit to some water and keep drinking and it's so good. And oh my gosh, I love my skin. It's so soft. So I will always be using that mint. 
Okay, over here, more broccoli. This is more of the strawberry spinach. This one's in a pot, but it's left. I can't move that pot. And the roots have set into this, so that's good. And tomatoes, you know, they're getting a lot of heat all day, so they're still doing, they're hanging in there, and that's okay. I'm not pulling anything out. You don't run and pull anything out because once the weather changes, these plants have an established root system and they will make a big comeback and surprise you a lot of times. So just hang on in there. Now, if they're dead, they're dead. Then you pull them out. But if they're not, leave them. This whole mess here, it looks like a mess. This is all celery and that's all celery seed. And see, it's, this is celery seed. Look at that celery seed. Now I'm going to drop this here and now I'm going to have celery all over the ground because I got celery growing everywhere. Onions in here, more colored in there, field of colored back there. We've got more zucchini growing back there and different squash growing back there. Red vein sorrow is right here. Let's see what else. I'm trying to see what else to go through. Oh, eggplant. Look at the eggplant down here. I didn't even see that one. It's full. We've been pulling off so much eggplant. In fact, there's so much that turns yellow, I miss it. I leave the yellow, as you can see, out for the rabbits. And look what the rabbits do. Which is okay, because hopefully they're leaving my other stuff alone. And eating that instead. And I think it's working. So that's what I've been doing with that. So this is two eggplant. That's all that's here. So there's one there, and there's one here. And we are getting more eggplant than we'll ever be able to use the fruit. Okay, I can't even get back there. This I'm going to need to clean up because it's turned into a jungle and this is not what I wanted. I've got tomato plant, one tomato plant back there that took off. And then I've got squash growing, squash growing there. Those are growing in my plastic black containers. I had a video on that too. And they're massive and there's all kinds of fruit back there. So I have to fight to get back there and get it. So I'm going to have to figure out how I want to do that and or just don't worry about it, because if I need it, I know it's there. Here's my purple kale, curly kale, which is doing really good. And there is my curly kale in here that somebody commented early in the year when they saw it and said, get it out of there, it looks terrible. No, because even though it is growing in a pot, in a container, I know it's got a big root system. And even though it may have looked a little bad in the beginning of the year, I figured I will leave it and it, it's massive. It's actually growing way past on the other side. It's so big. So let's see what else there is. Then you've got this little tomato plant here. Again, they're all struggling in the heat, but they're still going. Oh, I see a bean coming up down there. Tree collard. This is a tree collard. That's in a pot, but it's long left the pot, the roots, which is good because I do a lot of gardening this way. For a small time gardener, it works out really good because I water that pot and here with the heat, I know that plant is getting water and that's the main thing. So even if I just water the top, I know the water isn't leaving. It's watering my tree collard and to think this was so short and small not long ago, it's doing what exactly what I wanted it to do. I'm not sure, that might be dandelion coming up with my strawberries. Okay, see there is zucchini back there. Not sure if you can see that. But see, this is the jungle back here. I just have to be careful and be very cautious because we do have rattlesnakes. Okay, more zucchini and squash going back there. And more of that dazzling blue kale that the birds had devastated. Look at this. You can enjoy this with me. Bumblebees. You know, I used to run from the bumblebees. And now I don't. And I don't know why. Maybe I'm too old. To run from the bumblebees. I actually enjoy, enjoy watching them. More chocolate mint growing down there. See the stems are brown? That's chocolate mint. Okay, let me back out of here. Purple basil. One purple basil that got quite big. I would pull the flowers off because you're supposed to, but Gary likes to eat them. So I will let Gary come out. He can pull them off and he can eat them. That's that container I did a video on that's Deckard. It's got the big container on the bottom, a smaller container inside there, and then another one on the top. It's basically three decks. It's got so much growing in there, I, I just can't even figure out how much can grow like that. But it works really good. I've got beans growing. Look at all the beans. 
I've got purple, the blue dazzling kale. I've got tomatoes growing in there, the basil. I've got onions, garlic chives, parsley. And what I do sometimes, I don't know if I can get to the center. I have not planted in the middle one. Can you see that? I just throw leaves in there. So the rotting leaves, when I water the middle pot, feeds the whole container. Anybody can do that and grow that much food in such a small area. And yes, I haven't cleaned it up. I've got a lot of brown leaves from the heat. This gets really hit with heat. But, you know, we're getting a lot of tomatoes, and as soon as we see them starting to turn, we pull them off and use them. I'm going to go to the other side, so let's swing you around. There's my other container. And this one also I did a video on, because this was amazing. This squash was planted in that flower pot. Those are one of those flower pots I get from the florist. And it only had teeny holes on the side because I had it on the side of the house. The water was supposed to drain not on the bottom of the pot, but away about an inch to two inches off the bottom where the holes, so the water would go in one direction. I sat it in here because I saw that it was growing a squash and I was going to plant it. And the microbes and everything from all the rotting matter got in there and this plant just took off. It's only been here a few months. It's amazing and we get so much food off of that too. I did not plant the sweet potato. It came up out of the compost. I got sweet potatoes growing in there. And more beans and walking onions. There's a Swiss chard up there and celery and probably a few other things. Okay, now back to the other side. Okay, so we're keep going through here now. And let's see. So this is my collard field. And yes, the birds are just chewing it away. Look at that. See the leaves, when they first come in, look how soft and tender they look. That's what the birds are eating. And they get in there. I've got videos of them getting in there and chewing on the leaves. And then this is the way the leaf comes out. Because once this little leaf is damaged, there's no fixing it. The only thing you can do is pull it off. But it's not hurting the plant. The plant is still getting what it needs, even if the leaf is damaged. There's too many here that are damaged for me to try to pull off and clean the plant off. I could kill the plant by removing all the leaves. The plant needs leaves. So it's to, for me, it's better to leave the plants as they are, let the birds do their thing, and when the weather changes and they have their own food again, they won't be doing that much damage, and then I can clean up the plant. And this is collard. It makes the best compost tea. Just drop it in a bucket of water, and in two days you got compost tea, and your plants just take off. Is that purple tomato growing back there? I think it's called a, yeah, I think it's a blue tomato, blue, blue beauty or black beauty. Okay, this is all Swiss chard, red Swiss chard seed. Look at that. So this whole thing's going to turn brown soon. Look at the seeds. I don't know if you can see that. And one seed is like a just a whole bunch of seeds. There's a whole bunch in there. So when they drop, you can get multiple seeds. I don't think you can really break it open, but they're designed to drop like this and then they grow in clusters. And that will grow there. Here is that papaya that Gary drilled the holes on the bottom of this container. Look how big this thing is. It's now about six feet tall. There's two of them in there and a smaller one. I'm guessing the smaller one won't make it, but the two big ones probably will. Thing is just taken off. And during the heat in the beginning, the first heat wave in June, it looks so bad, but it's come back and it's doing great. Gary drilled some holes on the bottom and we're letting the roots take off. So the roots have now gone out and they're in the ground. So this plant will do fine here. We'll just have to keep an eye on it and see if we have to stake it later like our others. I don't know. But it's doing good and I'm not going to move it. Sometimes when you move papaya trees, they can, you know, it can cause a big setback or you can lose them. They can die. So we're going to leave this papaya tree. There's two of them there and then the little one there. I don't think the little one will make it. And then inside, all those are seedlings and they're about six inches tall. So I'm going to get those out. I brought some to a friend and I'm going to get the rest of them out. And hopefully I can get those transplanted somewhere. This one might be too big to try to get out. But the smaller ones, I should be able to look at them. They should be able to get them out. Got pepper plants growing in here too. See the little peppers starting. All right. Let's see. This is more tomatillos. The tomatillos came up from 
seeds that a little tomatillos that fell they came up on their own and there's a squash that came up yes this is powdery mildew it's very damp in this section but this is no big deal you just cut it off and they'll get new leaves it won't hurt it don't ever take all the leaves off plant has to have some leaves but I can trim this and this and then I can compost all that there is a Korean melon that has taken off out of this container here I threw some Korean melon seeds and look at that it's gone both ways and look at the little melons I think everybody should try to grow Korean melons they're sweet like a cantaloupe and they're small so you end up with more Korean melons quicker than you would if you grew cantaloupe or something big because they grow really quick once they take off all right let's step back I got garlic chives this is my moringa tree that I planted last year I don't know what is it 15 feet tall it's massive and we use this every day I actually take leaves off of this and put it in my mint tea now when I remember this is amazing and look at the pods look at the pods I've got okay Gary tasted one of these I did not and he said it, he did not like the taste so I don't think we'll be eating them but look at all the pods they're all over which means we're gonna have a massive amount of seeds if all goes well the pods have to turn brown and the seeds will grow inside and we'll see what happens if we have a lot of seeds maybe I can post some seeds for you guys to try it they do like warm areas they don't like the freeze and they could take a little bit of a freeze but if you can get them established these trees once you get a size to them the whole thing can die back to the ground and then come spring they just take off and grow again here's another moringa tree this one was something this one was chewed to the ground absolutely to the ground the rabbits ate it to the ground so let's see okay. I put some tool around there and the little tree took off and this is all new growth from this year so this is doing really good and then I've got some more containers I really have to work on there I haven't really done anything with them just stuff that's been there there's just so much it's not like I need all this food but whatever we don't use I compost so it works out really good and there's my strawberry towers and I've got strawberries grow but we pick them as fast as they grow if we don't pick them something else will so we need to get them out quick isn't this cool this is that Korean melon hopefully it's going to go over on the fence here and then I won't have to think about supporting it okay let's walk through the gates here this is my cucumber plants and this has been the greatest buy one tray I bought of cucumbers just one tray and I have had dozens and oh my gosh dozens of cucumbers look at this I preach to you guys I really don't want to use the word preach tell you get your cucumbers off before they get big I did not see this I came through here looking for cucumbers and look at that it's huge it should not be on there there's another one yes it keeps growing the cucumbers blend in where you really can't see them and I come out here in the evening a lot so I just don't see them you don't want to leave really a lot of cucumbers on your vine or the plant will say hey I was successful I'm done you know the occasional one yes but if you leave too many and your plant dies eggplant will do the same thing that's what it is it's done its job it's produced because it you know something that big this particular one back there yes there's some ants but they're pollinating so they're all right see that one that one's gonna have seeds in there it will have seeds so maybe I'll collect some of the seeds and then I'll still either make pickles or a salad out of it okay another squash seed came up in there it's just a bucket really not doing anything with that rosemary I gosh I got that at the dollar store quite a few years ago just stuck it on the hillside look at that massive plant just mint back there it's probably came up from seed so it's nothing in particular the papayas Gary has harvested so many papayas I cannot believe it this one did need to be strapped it got so heavy and it tilted so he's holding on to that in order to get papayas you gotta feed them they are heavy feeders 
and you don't need to go buy the food. If you want to go to the store and buy the food, that's fine. But we have found that all you have to do is compost. This is a compost container. I throw kitchen scraps, leaves, papaya leaves, skin from the papaya, whatever you don't eat in there. And the same thing with this one. Now, let's see. That is baby papayas coming up because we threw skin in there and there's a tomato plant crumbing up in that. But this is, these are compost tubs that I do. Without doing this, you won't get fruit. I, we would not get fruit. It was not getting enough food. So you have to feed papayas if you've got papayas growing. They are the easiest thing to sprout. They do like a lot of food. So I throw the papaya seeds away in the compost bins and they all sprout. I've got them sprouting everywhere. So they like a heavy food in their sprouting mix. But they are easy to sprout. So if you've got some rotting leaves and stuff, mix it in with some potting soil or something. And then just go ahead and throw some seeds in there. Seeds from the grocery store. Go buy yourself a nice papaya. Make sure it's really ripe. If it's not ripe, let it sit on the counter till it really ripens. And then collect those seeds. And you must plant them immediately. You've got to plant them right away. Because if they dry out, they're dead. Papaya seeds cannot be saved. It's not a seed like a radish seed, carrot seed, squash seed. They cannot dry out, just like an apple seed. Cannot dry out. So get them in the ground, get them in some soil right away, and they will grow. Oh, this is my pomegranate I planted from seed. That's another one that's fun to grow. Oh, little orange trees came up in my compost. You see, this is all com compost bins. Look at the rabbits. They ate the leaves. And I know this was the rabbits. I saw them. Uh, again, this particular tree, the third one on the end here, I've got all kinds of videos on this, so I don't have to get into detail on that, would not grow any fruit. We've harvested already a lot of fruit off, so it's got a little bit left and new flowers are starting. It would not grow fruit like the other two over here. And it was just the same age as all of these. What happened was this one had no compost bins. As soon as I set up my compost bins, and even this little one was a compost bin there with this tree coming out of, the tree just took off and started to grow and then it started to grow fruit. This papaya tree came up out of that compost bin because there was some papaya thrown in there. So we'll leave that one. That one's going to do beautiful. It's going to set root right there, deep, deep inside, which it already has, and it'll hopefully get big, just as big as all the others growing here. Let's see, what else? I'm going to show you something. Walk over here with me. How many of you guys have a man cave? This is my husband's man cave. Look at this. Do you have a man cave like that? I bet you don't have lizards in your man cave. I don't know. This is funny, but my husband will clear off his table and he'll do his videos here. He's got his chair there. He's got a wood chip pile here. Isn't that cute? And he's got the big massive pepper tree that we thought we were going to have to pull out. Look at the trunk on this pepper tree. I, I don't even know how big it is around. This tree was dying. Half the tree fell away. It just was dying. And when he brought in the wood chips, this tree just took off and this is like a tree of life this tree has all kinds of birds nesting in it all spring it's amazing look at the size of this tree and here half of the tree on the other side fell away but it all healed up and the tree has taken off and we do know it's because of the wood chips but here's the other side of the wood chips and he can come back here can pick up his bikes he finds in the trash he's got his dishwashers and his washing machines he picks up I have no idea what this is. I don't even, he never even told me he must have picked it up in the trash. Probably for the wheels. See, he's got wheels. He comes home with all kinds of stuff he sees people leave on the curbs and throw away. But this is his man cave. And he'll be sitting here. I see his coffee cup here sometimes that he puts coffee and tea in. And I've seen his camera set up. And he'll be working away in here. He says he likes it because in the hot sun, especially in the summer, it's shady. And he just likes doing some videos under there. Of course, we all have to see these videos. He's got a whole bunch of footage that he has done. 
more wood chips here. You know, if you're collecting wood chips, if you're getting wood chips for gardening, don't forget to water them. And I'll have to show you how I water them. It's just water along the top, all along the top with the hose. Just take your hose and just run it along the top. You know, not long, just a little bit. The water will seep inside the middle and then you'll get all kinds of fungi growing. And that's what you want. The middle of these wood chip piles are breaking down. So when I want some wood chips, I just dig in the center and they're breaking down. Oh, my truck bed. I had to cover this because the rabbits were getting my red Swiss chard. And I really didn't do a lot this year. We did not plant any squash in here, but I've got some, I believe this is Korean melon I just put in here. And look at this. This is an avocado tree that came up in the compost I had put in here. But even though it looked like it died back with all the heat, it did not. It's getting green again. Look at that. It really doesn't belong in here. So we'll have to figure out what we're going to do with it. Very things chop it out, but we'll see. I've got a lot of red Swiss chard growing here. And then green Swiss chard came up. I probably grabbed a handful and threw it in there. And garlic chives. And I think this is walking onions. I also had some onion seeds I threw in here. So that's what's going on here. One year we grew 50 plus sp spaghetti squash in there and we got sick of it, so we didn't do it. Okay, let's go look at the wall. Okay, we're walking over to the wall now. Now, again, if you've got wood chips that somebody dumped and you're not gonna use it, and you're in an area you get no rain, just, you know, put some water in the center. This holds what you know, this is damp in here. This will break down and turn into great soil, but it does have to have some sort of water. You can't just leave it in, you know, the dry, hot, 100 degree weather. All you have to do is just take a hose all along the top. You just run the water, it will go inside, and all kinds of fungi will grow in there and break this down beautiful. So don't forget to water your compost. This is the wall, I haven't done too much. Yes, I let my eggplant go yellow. I don't know, I'll have to pick it and compost all that. I haven't really done anything in here, so I've got all kinds of yellow eggplant, but the eggplant is supposed to be like this. This is not a purple one, this is a different variety. Again, it came up from seed and probably was composting there and it came up. But I will have to get the yellow off. If I leave the yellow ones too long, the plant could die. So I'm gonna take the yellow ones off and compost them. They, they make good compost and I can also cut them off and leave them on the ground and the rabbits will eat them. I have more eggplant than I'm gonna use. And here's another cucumber plant and that cucumber is ready to come off. I've got walking onions, celery, celery, and more celery, let's see. See the baby, let's see if we can go on the other side and see the baby cucumber. Okay. Yeah, baby cucumber. If you didn't have bees, you could pollinate them. And you would have to look for the male and female. This is a female, there's a little cucumber back there. This one doesn't look to have. It's kind of like squash. So you could hand pollinate. We have got plenty of bees, so I don't have to worry about pollinating. But if you didn't, you could hand pollinate just like you would do any type of squash. I do have to cover a lot of my Swiss chard because of the rabbits. And then I've got tomatoes coming up through here. And then a squash came up. Haven't really done anything. Look at this. This was a big, big Swiss chard and the rabbit chewed it in half. It was an old Swiss chard, but it chewed it in half. Okay, this one needs to be cleaned up a little bit. This one I noticed is struggling. I saw this the other day. See how my squash are turning yellow? So what I'm going to do, I, I have gotten massive amount of squash off of this, but because it's so big, and this is a double-decker container, I'm going to compost right back there, probably today, and I have not even fed this any compost tea or anything, so I'm going to throw a bunch of kitchen scraps or I will take a container like this, sit it in there with holes on the bottom and compost in that and it will feed it and everything will be good. Because I think it's struggling for food and it's been very hot, but I can put the container back there and then when it goes down from one container to the other, it will feed them. So I wouldn't call it a failure. The reason I wouldn't call it a failure, see there's green ones back there and new ones coming, is 
I need to feed this plant a little bit more because it got so big. If it didn't get so big, it probably would be fine. And it just needs something, a little boost. Even if I brought some leaves over here and threw it in a bucket and made some compost tea and dumped it in, it would work. It's just that it's on the other side of my garden, so I haven't done it. But I will do it today. And I will get the yellow squash off because it doesn't need the yellow squash. And probably compost the squash that's turned yellow and I will get it fed in there and everything should be fine with it have not done anything with the bathtub yet try to keep your buckets turned sideways if you've got things around because lizards fall in and they can't get out so let's see so that's pretty much it so we've done the garden tour and as you can see there's Gary's man cave isn't that funny so that's it for mid-august I think we did really good considering the heat we had. I know so many people lost everything. I feel so bad for people. I mean, it's sad, but it's a plant. No big deal. Pull it out and get another one going. Fortunately, most of these plants grow really, really quick. And the weather hopefully will start cooling down. I don't know when. Here in Southern California, we don't cool down that much. I really lost very few plants, and I really do think it's the way I garden, because we have been, gee, there was a day we were 115, but my daughter told me it was 121 where she was, and she lives out here. So I don't know, um, even somebody else I know, a gardener posted it was 121. So I think the way I do it might be working. I mean, it's working for me. I do water at night, and yes, it can cause powdery mildew, but I'd rather have powdery mildew on my plants over having no plants. So I heavily water at night and I soak the bottoms. I try not to get the leaves wet, but you know, they do get wet. And when they do get wet, if they don't dry off quick enough, then yes, I can end up with powdery mildew, but the plants survive. And I do not water during the day. If I have to, if we're having such hot weather that some of the plants absolutely need it, then I will water from the bottom. And that's so important. From the bottom, lay your hose in there. Don't have a sprayer on. Forget the sprayer. Pull the sprayer off. You don't want the sprayer on. And just lay your hose down and water. Then you're getting the roots of the plant because watering the leaves will not help the plant in the heat. I keep saying that. It's the opposite. That's like taking your leaves and cooking your collard on a pot with boiling water. If you get water on that and it's hot, the leaves will cook and there's no coming back from that. The leaves will dry up and that's when you get those crumbly leaves if they were wet. Water from the bottom and hope for the best. And you know what? If it doesn't make it, pull it out, compost it. It's still great compost. Throw it in something, compost it and grow on top of it. So with that, this is my mid-August, and I probably made it too long, and we'll do another one in September. I don't do a big gardening in for the winter because my stuff just keeps growing the way I have it growing. Some of my dinosaur kale is in the ground, some of it is not. They all seem to make it. My broccoli, my collards, my kales, all of them, the onions, they just keep going. I might go and look around see if there's something different I can plant. I might try spinach this year. But the thing is, the way I grow, it's kind of like a food forest. If it's going and it's alive, I keep it. And these are just going to look so beautiful when the weather cools down. They'll get so green and the leaves will get even bigger than the way they are now. And they'll be sweet tasting. So that's the way I grow my garden. Everybody's got to do it the way it works for them. Everybody's going to have a different way. You can come back and say, no, you're doing it wrong. You know what? For where you're growing or the way you're growing, it could be totally wrong. But the way I'm growing, mm -mm. this is the way I do it. It's working and I want it easy. I am not going to come out here and slave in my garden. I want my garden to thrive, but I want to do it as easy and cheap as possible. And making my own tea for my plants by just throwing leaves and letting it soak in a bucket just for a day or two. You know, if you get any mosquitoes in there, you got to dump it, but that's okay. You dump it and you can either use the rotting leaves in another pot to set up, or you could just fill it up with water again. 
You can let it dry out and then refill it and it will break down all over again. You can add a few more leaves to it. So with that, I'm done with my garden tour. I hope you enjoyed it. Sorry if it took so long. Please like and subscribe. And thank you. Thank you so much for joining me on my tour. Thank you for everything. Have a great day. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye.